Right now, the world faces a terrifying crisis. The fuel rods and the spent core at Fukushima Unit 4 are 100 feet in the air. It's hard to comprehend, but the General Electric design, uh, which was the design used at Fukushima, set up the fuel storage pool to be 100 feet in the air. And as a result of the accident, the residual rods from this unit are uh, in a very, very precarious position. Now, we know that the earthquake did tremendous damage to Fukushima units one, two, three, and four. Thankfully, units five and six were higher up and were not as badly harmed. We have had explosions at units one, two, and three, and the cores from units one, two, and three are in the ground somewhere. We don't know exactly where they are. The ut utility company, TEPCO, and the Japanese government have been pouring water onto the site, hoping to keep these cores cool. Uh, unfortunately, we have had steam emissions at the site, which indicates there's still at least some heat uh, coming from one or more of these cores. The problem right now is Unit 4. Just prior to the uh, earthquake, uh, Tokyo Electric Power Company removed the core from Unit 4 to do routine maintenance and refueling. And they put that very, very hot core into the fuel pool 100 feet in the air. When the earthquake came, it damaged, significantly damaged the building uh, at Unit 4. It may have damaged the fuel pool. It may have damaged some of the fuel. And uh, for the last year and a half, since March 11, 2011, this uh, fuel core with um, some uh, 1,300 or more fuel rods in it, it weighs 400 tons, and it contains as much radiation as would be necessary to deliver 13,000 times as much radioactive fallout as was released at Hiroshima. Now, the problem is that this uh, uh, core, these fuel rods, have to come to the ground somehow. They can't stay up there. It's almost a miracle that they've been cooled as long as they have to sustain the cooling system uh, in a damaged building uh, to a pool 100 feet in the air has been quite a feat. It can't continue forever. Uh, the other problem is that the earthquake situation at Fukushima continues to be volatile. We have had numerous aftershocks, and uh, it's only a matter of time before a large enough earthquake comes through at Fukushima to uh, crumble the rest of Building 4 and knock these fuel rods to the ground. The building is damaged, and it's sinking. Because so much water has been poured onto the Fukushima site to try and keep the other cores cool, and because of the nature of the aquifer, there's actually a natural kind of river that is flowing through the Fukushima site now, carrying radioactive materials into the Pacific Ocean. This has weakened the uh, substructure, the ground on which uh, Unit 4 and the other buildings at Fukushima uh, are resting. And uh, the building uh, at Unit 4 is actually tilting and sinking into the ground. In addition, there's a common spent fuel pool 50 meters from Unit 4, which contains uh, more than 6,000 fuel rods. Overall, there are 11,000 fuel rods at the Fukushima site. We have to understand about these rods, by the way, they are the most, le most lethal substance human beings have ever created. If, a, if a, a rod had been in this room when we started this interview, we'd be all dead by now. It, it is an incredibly toxic stuff. In addition to that, the fuel rods are clad in zirconium alloy. Zirconium alloy will spontaneously ignite if it's exposed to air. That's why it has to be kept underwater at all times. Zirconium is actually the element that was used in those old flash cubes that used to uh, get, get so bur burn so bright and so quickly when you took a photograph uh, in the old days. So um, this zirconium alloy is incredibly dangerous. And as I say, it needs to be kept cool 100% underwater or it will ignite and uh, it burns very hot and, and could in fact cause the fuel rods to catch fire. The health risks of this kind of accident are almost incomprehensible. You have uh, Tokyo, one of the world's largest cities, with a huge conglomeration of human beings less than 200 miles away. The, the cloud from fin Fukushima from this kind of accident would not diminish in its, in its lethal capabilities. We're already seeing hot spots in Tokyo from the releases that have come now that are very, very dangerous. Radiation does not come down in, in some kind of magically evened out average dose. You get huge clumps of radiation um, uh, that coming down which are, are lethal. Uh, we've seen it at Three Mile Island and at Chernobyl uh, and already at Fukushima. 
where the thyroid uh, abnormality rate among children is, is starting to look very suspect. So this cloud, depending on the winds, uh, would eventually, one way or another, make its way to Tokyo. Wind does eventually go in 360 degrees. Generally, the winds, uh, unfortunately for the United States, uh, blow straight out into the Pacific, but that means they carry all the way across uh, the Pacific Ocean. A cloud the size that could be released from a major accident with this fuel pool at Fukushima 4 would come to California within less than a week. The, whole, the entire West Coast from Alaska, uh, Washington, uh, Oregon down to California and certainly into Mexico. It would be uh, a lethal cloud. Uh, children and elder, the elderly would be affected first. Uh, it would go all the way across the United States. It would contaminate our, our food, our milk, our water and recircle the globe a number of times. The initial cloud from Chernobyl was very clearly detected going across the United States within 10 days and came back again uh, within the month. And so we would see the permanent contamination very quickly of the northern hemisphere. And you have to understand a cloud 13, 15,000 times as potent as the one that was released in Hiroshima is a lethal dose to, to many millions of people. So the implications of a, a fuel pool uh, at, at Fukushima that loses its water in the air or uh, where the, the, uh, the rods deteriorate to the point where they can catch fire or that falls to the ground uh, with an earthquake or the crumbling of the building or that's mishandled uh, by TEPCO or whoever else is doing it, uh, trying to bring it to the ground. These are all uh, situations that can result in a, a radiation release that would impact many, many millions of people not just in Japan, not just in the United States, but all over the world. The removal of these fuel rods uh, is probably going to put the world in the most precarious position that it's been since the time that the U.S. and USSR were you know, facing each other down at Cuba and elsewhere with, with, with nuclear missiles. Uh, the amounts of radiation we're talking about here are lethal on a global scale. So what we're looking at now with the uh, uh, potential drop down of this fuel core, these 1,300 plus 400 tons of fuel rods in the suspended fuel pool at Unit 4 is a catastrophic accident. Now, Tokyo Electric Power has said that they want to remove these rods and try and bring them down in November. We don't believe a private utility company, has, certainly not TEPCO, which has had a terrible track record already at Fukushima, uh, is capable of doing this job. They don't have the financial, the technological, the scientific resources. The, uh, they've just uh, uh, earmarked another $10 billion uh, for the Fukushima site, but it's not sufficient. <clears throat> the government of Japan has stepped in, but the government of Japan um, has a vested interest in not letting the world know how serious the situation really is. They've just secured the 2020 Olympics, which is astounding to me, but nonetheless, uh, we can't trust either entity. We are petitioning at nukefree.org a request that the United Nations and the American government step in and that all the world's scientific engineering and economic resources be focused on bringing these rods down to the ground. It's hard to comprehend that such a specific pinpointed situation could have such a potentially huge effect on the entire human race, but that's the situation now at Fukushima. So we're asking people to go to the nukefree.org site to link to the petition which is on Move On. We've already had uh, some 50,000 people sign it and another parallel petition, another 25,000 signatures at Roots Action. We will present these uh, petitions to the United Nations sometime in October or early November. And uh, you know, the survival of the human race is really at stake here. And we hope that people will focus on this. We want 24-7 uh, coverage of this. When they move in to, to move these fuel rods, we want it live televised so that the whole world can be watching. It's the only hope we have that we, uh, there's a real transparency at Fukushima.